like the living dead. Like they got nothing between their ears. How come they don't seem to hear a single word I say? They ain't the only ones who's bored to tears. Now there must be a better way to educate. Because this ain't working like it should. Can't they just invent a pill or frozen concentrate that makes you smarter and taste mmm so good? Because, hey, I got to know what I have to show when I high, high ho it from here. Will I be in pain or will I have a brain or will I go insane? This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley and Richter from deep in the bowels of our underground lair where we don't got him. <coughs> oh, that's awesome. Gee. Good cough at the beginning of the show. And you I, do 226 perfect openings. You can screw up the 227th, well, Jay, okay? All right. <clears throat> yeah, here we are. We're in our underground layer where we uh, always are. The bunker, we just closed the bunker door. Air came it's, out of the balloon, that's it. That's all you got. <laughs> it is, it, it is uh, bulletproof and everything else, fireproof, Yeah, all that kind of stuff. It's apparently not. I don't know what's ever making me cough. Here, yeah, but. it's not allergy proof or something. Out, you get allergies? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I, as a singer, it's terrible. A couple of weeks ago, I had, uh, I get the uh, <clears throat> uh, like dry throat with like the red eyes. Oh, okay. and then my contacts make it worse. They really bother me during that. I look like I have double pink huh. eye, and I don't. I'm just. It's irritating, I guess yeah. is the best I word. guess I don't get a lot of the, the red eye or whatever, but, like, um, you know, I, I get really phlegmy, okay. which for, you know, singing, that's terrible because you sound like, hey, everyone. You know what you sound like? <laughs> you sound like yeah. on the old dial radio when yeah. you just weren't quite getting the station. And right. <laughs> you know, admit that's yeah, that's about it. I'm just not quite getting the station. And yeah. There's nothing I can do about it. That's a good way to put it. I always remember that uh, yeah. the old dial radio I had. I only had two stations I ever listened to. Yeah, KDWB for music, because that was the. I don't know if it still is, but it was, you know, the hopping station in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, and then eight thirty to listen to the Twins on W. And I would have to move it every time I switched. Yeah. between them on on my old dial radio back yeah. in my in my room back mm. in the back in the time. But Jay. We come to the song. I already forgot it. <laughs> I, I don't know it, but it sounds familiar. Yeah. Does it? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why. Maybe it's just when you sing it, it sounds familiar. Oh, maybe. But I, 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 could, I can't even voice. fathom a guess. I kind of have that voice. I, I just came from singing, believe it or not. So I just, yeah. One sold out crowd. Sold out. Well, I don't know. To the max capacity? I don't know. Whatever it was. Yeah. But... <laughs> Say it was a sellout. Who cares? Sure. None of you were there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got that royalty no, check in the mail. Nobody right? else. Would, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. yeah. I will get royalty checks, actually. Yes. Good. Uh, as a songwriter, when I get when I play my own songs live, I go to my uh, PRO or performing rights organization, which is ASCAP, and I put my set list oh, in. ASCAP. Yeah. yeah. And so all of my songs that I wrote, I get to get paid for playing them. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Now, now let me ask you something. Yes. When, how much? How much? When you are, and I've seen you perform a bunch of times. How much of, and I don't know why I don't know the answer to this. Maybe <laughs> I should. When you're out performing, how much do you do your own music, and how much is it music? Yeah, that we would all know as fans of, of you know, rock and all this. It, it varies. You know, it varies on the show and what the expectations are. Um, if I'm just showing up somewhere and it's supposed to be, you know, a lot of my acoustic shows, I, I, I do all sorts of 80s and 90s rock and roll stuff. Uh, I do slide my own songs in there. and uh, But there are other songs where it's kind of expected you play all your own stuff. And so... Uh, I do that there. So. so if you're at a show where it's like, okay, you, you, the expectations are that you play mostly stuff we would all know. Yeah. Do you do like an 80-20 mix or something like that? Or, you mm, know? No, you know, I, I might, depending on, on how long I'm playing for, you know, slip in eh, maybe every half hour, try and oh, slip okay. one in 40 minutes. You know, it, it just depends. Okay. Yeah. I, I have to pay attention to that the next time I... I right. remember when I saw you at Mavericks, you would announce when it was your own song. And I You'd still kind of do. Yeah, here's you know. something I did. And, but 
I have to be kind of careful, though, talking about like a lot of the newer batch of songs that I've written. Um, I'm working on a new album right now, and so I, I've got like 13 songs I've written, and um, I'm trying to do all the demoing and stuff. I've got like acoustic versions, but now I got maybe I should help you write yeah, some of them. Maybe, maybe I yeah. bet I can come up with some good rhymes. Oh, I'm sure you could. I'm sure you could. I've I've heard some of that. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> But anyways, uh, where was I? Where was I going with that? Oh, uh, so uh, talking about some of these songs now, you know, you, you want to people like storytellers with, with songwriters and, uh, you know, where did the song come from? What does it mean to you? Um, interesting stories about it. But when I get up there now and I'm saying like, yeah, we're losing our right to free speech and it's super important. And this song is about not being canceled. You know, some people can take offense to that. And yeah, unfortunately, I'm okay that's with that. true. You know, <clears throat> I, I'm well, okay with that. Well, but it's always been that way. Go back to the 60s. And yeah. Some songs were, you know, about opposing the war and yeah. about civil rights and all that that were controversial yeah. then. And and now now they've all grown up and they've become the man and want you to follow the government. Right. I know that they were the counterculture at one time. And yeah. now, they, now they want to implement. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's true, yeah, unfortunately, they, they and they're stifling. Yeah. They're stifling creativity. They're stifling new yes. ideas. That's what's that's the tragedy of it. Is and anyone who comes up with protest songs against them, yeah. they're getting shut out. That's right. <laughs> it's okay if you do it against uh, people you don't like. Right, right, right. <laughs> I, you know what? It's that way in everything, though. I, right now, I, I hate to say it, but you know, I, I'm the world's biggest professional wrestling fan. I don't watch it anymore because right. there's so many storylines they won't touch. Yeah. Because it's the woke culture. And there used to be a time where wrestling loved controversy. Uh huh. But you can't do a show with the foreign menace anymore because right. now the Asian group or the Iranian American Arab it, it, group. It depends will, a little bit. Largely, they yeah. stay away from it. They though. do. They don't really highlight the country, but I, I, I mean, I'm surprised, you know, that once in a while when I catch a clip of something that they have an Indian guy that Th they, they make into a bad guy. And they do, but they don't. It's not. <sighs> there's no us versus them anymore. Right. It's not the chic. And Nikolai coming out and singing the Russian national anthem. Right, they never allowed. I mean, he that. used to just boo Nikolai yeah. Volkov. Iron Sheik. I, I, th oh. There are days I can't believe that he wasn't killed. <laughs> I mean, serious. Here's an Iranian wrestler, really from yeah. Sheik Adnan Al Casey grew up with Saddam Hussein. Yeah, it was not fake when they were playing those roles. Okay, <laughs> right. So it's but today, I mean, nobody will touch it. It's just I just think it's it's. The whole woke corporation stuff has what it does is it kills any idea that's outside the box. Yeah. Any idea that's outside the box is dead on arrival. Yeah. So what are you stuck with? Two guys in their underwear, you know, running around a ring, which gets boring uh, after a while. Yeah. If there's no story to there's no reason I should cheer one guy or boo the other. Yeah. There are stories, but they're not very good. You know, it is lame. And I hate saying that because the guys who do it are working their butt off and they do uh, moves. They're that, amazing athletes. They're incredible athletes. But there's too many high spy. I don't even want to get I, I can't even get no. into it. But I just watch Peacock, watch old Saturday Night's made events like I do. It'll it'll fill yeah. your niche for you. Um question, Jay. Hold on before we go there. Oh yeah. The song. Oh, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, Twisted Sister, be cruel to your school. Twisted Sister, yeah, I remember her. <laughs> They're the guys who clean the uh, the. There's four guys dressed as women. I call them Twisted Sister whenever oh. I see hey, Twisted Sister going on the. Okay, they really do. They really dressed as Sheila's and wow. they go out there and clean the. I don't know, it's some uh, that, sort of joke. Yeah, it's a joke. Can you joke about that nowadays? <laughs> is that is that allowed? If it's I do it anyway. If you, you want to flag me for misinformation, I guess. Well, no, but I mean, like, they're doing it as a joke, right? Yeah. They're, yeah. They're allowed to do that. I think so. I don't know what they are, but they dress, wow. they look like Laura Ingalls. You know, would you call it a drag queen now? Not if it's done as a joke. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't think like that. Like, you yeah, can especially those guys tuck in so much. <laughs> uh, anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> so, moving on. 
Did you see Biden's speech at the U.N. the other day? Unfortunately, I saw part of it. Oh, my <laughs> word. Did you see the part? <laughs> huh? I'll tell you what. As a yeah. country, we really need to confront his mental decline. I mean. Yeah, we do. When, when I, he went to. Uh, Here's what I love. He's he's going to pledge billions of dollars to developing nations to fight climate change, yeah. knowing that China, India, Russia, they're not going to do squat. So it's going to have a big time effect. You know, China's building coal plants. Uh, India's polluting the rivers. Nobody cares about it. But of course he does. Right. So another thing your tax dollars will be spent on. Ugh. Add to it. This was the funniest part. They got to give CNN credit. They cut away from this as quickly as they could. Biden was going on and on about how, of course, in comes the woke stuff. And the first thing was he lectured the world that they have to accept LGBTQI. Yes. What is the I? Uh, is that indecisive? Let's see. Uh, they keep adding letters. LGBT questioning and I is... I thought questioning was queer. I thought Q was queer. Oh, uh, it's questioning. Um... Doesn't matter. I don't care. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, and then he said that Afghanistan better respect women. Oh, yeah. CNN cuts to the Taliban already seated at the U.N. And right. The Taliban was literally laughing. Were they? And boom, I CNN didn't see cuts that. away from it. Oh, like I didn't that. see that. Maybe oh, somebody, maybe goodness. some brave soul put it on YouTube. But it was like the, they were just going, oh. Hey, Joe, I'll tell you what. They're going to listen to you, boy. You know, they kill 13 soldiers when we're leaving. You do nothing. Right. You drone a, a car with 10 civilians in it, and they think for one second if they don't treat with the Me Too movement doesn't go to Afghanistan, you're going to do a damn thing about it? Yeah, I know. But they just laughed. <laughs> I mean, uh. you know what? It's funny. I'm laughing about it, but I I'm embarrassed that a president would go in front of a, a body that has... Uh, Syria, Iran, on their Human Rights Commission, and sit there and talk about women's rights in Afghanistan. I mean, you either either you're pandering or you're an ignorant fool. Now, take your pick when it comes to Biden. He's probably both. But yeah. I mean, I, I I find a speech like that embarrassing. Well, and and this is why it's a it, joke. It's not that the if you read the speech, you might think yeah, that's except for the global warming parts. Uh, that might not be so bad because he's holding so and so to account and so and so to account. But then you look at our actions; it's like, pfft, what? Well, yeah, I mean, do do I want women to be discriminated? Of course no. not. But the no, idea that but, you're going to lecture a country that we just left, right, disgracefully, and and you're going to tell them that, the, Paul, oh, yeah. oh, you better, you better give women; they better be more than just secretaries over in your country, pal. You're going to well, do what? And you're going to sit there with your thumb up your butt. That's what you're going to do. But here's the thing. He should be calling out Afghanistan. He should be. But he shouldn't be saying, you better treat women well. He should be saying, you guys were looking for the, the teen women's soccer team. Shame on you. Yes. To, to shame on you for having having uh, brides lists of young girls that you want to marry off and rape. Right. Uh, shame human on you for, for your human trafficking. Shame on you for the women that you're killing. Shame on you for the Christians you're killing in the streets. Shame on you for the journalists you're killing in the streets. Shame on you for the homosexuals you're kid killing in the streets. Right. Shame on you for what you you promised you weren't going to do this stuff, and, and you went right back to your old ways and even worse. Shame on you. Yeah, and he should be calling out the U.N. General Assembly as well. For doing nothing. For doing nothing, and for the joke that is the, the, I mean, how do you put Iran on a human rights list <laughs> yeah committee how do you take that seriously you can't I mean it's 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 a it, it's disgusting and I'm sorry but yeah. the president is a coward right he wants to go there and rub elbows he wants to go there and and uh, you know Give a speech that politically his friends will like here, but he knows isn't going. He knows he's full of it. Yep. Uh, at least whoever wrote it knows it. Maybe right. Joe does it. it it's like putting Michael Bolton on the decision making panel for who gets into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> That's rough. <laughs> That's as bad as putting Hart on there. <laughs> oh come on now. Uh, you and I have argued about Hart. 
enough. But yeah, let me tell you something. Uh, that is pretty bad. That's <laughs> Michael. <Phelps. laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh. You put meatloaf on there, too. I don't know. Um, Jay, one other thing. Here, I, this is an interesting story. And, and once upon a time, yes. we actually brought this up in, in a, in a I, I, cannot, I could not find the episode. Because you know what we talk about at the beginning, you know, <laughs> I don't know what episode it was. It was right. on. Do you know? Once again, your buddy, Sirhan Sirhan, is up for parole. Really? Have you heard this story? What just happened? No, I have not. Okay, on August twenty seventh, did Kamala Harris bail him out of jail? Maybe. Oh, um, of course, okay. she's not going to answer anything. Right. If she did. She might laugh about it. Yeah, she's certainly not going to talk about it. August 27th, 2021, his 16th appearance before the parole board, Sir Khan was recommended for parole. What? He is 77 years old. Listen to this. I guess the process in California is... Oh, that that's where he is. Okay. Yeah. The pres- I've got it. Senator Kennedy was killed in at the Ambassador Hotel in right, LA. Right, right. <clears throat> the legal division of the Board of Parole Hearings can take up to four months to recommend that the full decision lies with King Gavin. Two years ago, Newsom rejected Sir Hans. It got to him and he said, no, go back to jail. Hmm. So there's no guarantee of it. This is what I found interesting. Yeah. In Robert Kennedy's Harvard children, um, who all earned their way into Harvard, you know, it's just amazing one family can have like eight people who they're all that brilliant. Yes. Listen to this. Two of Kennedy's surviving sons, Douglas Kennedy and Robert Kennedy Jr., offered their support for Sirhan's release. Hear me out. Can I ask you a question, first of all? Yeah. Somebody killed one of your parents. Yeah. Could you ever see yourself going to their, for any reason, going to their parole hearing and recommending that they get out? Probably not. I mean, I, because because of my faith, I would have to learn to forgive them, which would be very hard. But it's something and that maybe that after fifty three years I'm, you could. I, I'm bound in my faith to do is is to forgive. And so am I. However, to that let means, them that out means of nothing prison, about letting them out of prison. No, that doesn't. That doesn't mean you sentenced to death and then. Like the Manson killers, the yeah. sentences were commuted later. I, I, my answer to that is uh, forgiving. If he's sorry, forgiving him. That's yeah. I'll let God sort that out. I'm, I, I'm a mortal, and I somebody's. This is one of the problems we have in this country. Life in prison doesn't mean life. Right. It means. But I'm. I'm. Yeah. But I'm as just as perplexed. Six. Uh, Robert Kennedy has 10 kids. Eight are still alive. Okay. Six of his surviving kids, and it goes through them, um, opposed Sir Hans, which has got to make some interesting uh, Thanksgiving. Yes. Uh, if they actually do it with their masks or whatever. Right, right, right. Okay. And they filed a statement together opposing Sir Hans' release. Rory Kennedy. Is that a guy or a girl? That'd be a guy, probably. That's a girl. Is it a girl? A filmmaker. Oh, go figure. Yeah. My high school basketball coach was oh, named Rory. She was the one born after Kennedy's death. Remember, Ethel Kennedy was pregnant, oh, five months pregnant. Okay. Um, that's right. I've, okay. I, okay. I remember who she is now. Um, filed a statement and actually did an interview where her reasoning was that uh, Sir Han did not z- deserve parole citing his lack of remorse and his unwillingness to accept any responsibility. Well, I have a question, though. Yeah. Because that sounds like a great corporate talking point. Yeah. But if he accepted killing and, and took responsibility, why would that be a reason to release him? It's not. Again, I mean, I'll uh, let God sort out whether he's sorry or not. That's not my deal. Right. I don't give a damn if he's sorry. No. <laughs> That's not my... I, I'm just kind of like... To me, that makes less sense. I'm like... Yeah. You know, again, <laughs> oppose can... him because he was sentenced to life, and that should be the. <laughs> I know it's California, and that's the thing. Is this L.A. County? 
by chance, like is ga- yes, really, yeah. So Gascon is is the yes. DA there, yeah. And so, oh my word, um, oh. Gascon, however, is not taking a position on this. Oh really? Yeah, he is. Um, he issued a directive to his office that they were not to attend parole hearings or take a position on parole, which it might sound okay, but to me, I'd like a prosecutor. Yeah. To sort of say, yeah, he's in jail. I mean, if I'm up on the parole board, yeah. I'm like, where's the uh, DA's office? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know obviously Gaskin wasn't the guy who, you know, put him in it. Yeah. Right. I mean, clearly not, but I mean, it's kind of, I, I'm we're and I gotta love, you know, you gotta give Sirhan some credit here. Um, you know, the guy who's so nice, his mama <laughs> named him twice. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because his repeated claim, Right. That he does not remember anything about the shooting. Now, Jay, Duh. there have been a lot of important... Eleven. I remember yep. where I was when my mom passed away. I remember where I was when the Challenger exploded. I remember where I was when the Twins won the World Series twice. I can yeah. tell you those days. If I ever killed somebody, I'm guessing I would, I would put that in the memory bank. Okay. Unless it was the CIA's mind control. It could have been. MK Ultra. It did it. He continues to repeat the claim, yes. saying, quote, yes. it's all vague now. I'm sure you have it in your records. I can't deny it or confirm it. I just wish the whole thing had never taken place. Well, that's convenient, don't you think? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just, so, it's, yeah, you know what? I I don't know. It's kind of foggy. I, I You know, there was like a kitchen, and, yeah. and I, 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 I don't know what happened. Uh, I wish it had never taken place. Is that because you've been in prison most remorseful that you kill well what him else at. does he have to do but sit around and and uh, think about um you know what happened I, I mean yeah um god there's another here's <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at this yeah but I got I got the giggles from this guy this guy named Paul Schrade okay who was an aide to Mr. Kennedy okay okay has supported Sirhan's release because he believes a second shooter <laughs> is actually the one who also oh fired at Kennedy. Now, let me ask Mr. Schrade something. Yeah. And he's 91, okay. okay, and I don't even know if he's still alive. That was his last parole hearing, his 15th one. Yeah. Can I ask Mr. Schrade something? Um, if Sirhan, if there was a second gunman, doesn't that make Sirhan the first gunman? I mean, why is that a reason for his? And if there was a second gunman, that means for 53 years, Sirhan has concealed that person's identity. Right. I'm assuming he knew the other person. There are more people shooting at the Kennedys than I've ever seen yeah. shooting at anybody. <laughs> so, hey, that guy's got to be liberal. Hey. I mean, think about that. Uh, yeah. Hey, you know what? You should release the first shooter because we don't have the second shooter. So let's release that guy and... You know, yeah. we'll, we'll find this 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 you know this, this phantom guy, guy from yeah. find from the, the boogeyman. 60s, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, so between that, and there, and there were at least two shooters in in his brother's shooting. You know, right? You know, and how many people there from were the torn. CIA that were in on it? And oh boy, who knows? Who knows? Another show, just, yes. That's just funny. The <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with King Gavin. This process could take a little longer, but um, right. Sirhan plans to stay in California. Yeah. And well, I I hope he does too. Like in he'll the probably cell get his voting rights. In. Yeah, he'll probably get his but, voting rights restored. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So maybe they could transfer him out to Alcatraz. Yeah. Uh. Why not? Why not? Where, what's, where's he going to go there? Yeah. So. Um, so it, you can't make that stuff up, folks. You just can't make it up. Goodness. I, Biden at the UN and Sirhan getting out of jail. You just. Yeah. I, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I mean, I laugh about it. I mean, it's yeah. funny, but it's also serious. I mean, right. It's also, you know, I don't know. To me, it's just upsetting. But I'll tell you what's just as upsetting. Yeah. And you. One thing you can never get away from with public education are these referendums. 
Yes. And of course, there's gazillions again on the ballot. Oh, of course. Everybody, of course, has no money. It's just, I mean, we have no money. We, we, we can't do anything. Well, here. we're not going to have any money pretty soon. Well, but I mean. Just wait. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we and, and I love, here's the one thing when you look at, we'll talk about a few levies here, this referendum. Yes. With a B. Uh, is that all of them have mastered the art of not asking for more money. It's not a tax increase. Right. They've also mastered the way to minimize a tax increase. Mm-hmm. No, it's not hundreds of dollars. It's, it's, it's $3 a week. Latte a day. Latte a day. It's, yeah. it's 35 cents. Of, I mean, they, they've found ways to minimize these things that they're asking for. Right. And I'm going to add to it that they are never challenged by any media anywhere. No. It is a dereliction of duty that these your local newspaper is as worthless as a milk bucket under a goat. They <laughs> will, they absolutely unequivocally. I mean, let me tell you something. If I yeah. wanted to be a local reporter for a cable channel, all I would have to do is go to a city or school district's Facebook page or website yep. and barf up the diarrhea that they just put out on their propaganda pieces. Mm-hmm. That's all that happens. Right. Voters will be asked on November to if they want to renew this levy for another 81 years and if they want to blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, you didn't tell me anything. That's yeah. not... Rep- I mean, go in depth. Where is the... the, the uh, I don't what even know what exactly you call it. exactly are they going to pay for with this money? And what did they do with the money from the last referendum? Well, where's the where's the uh, wanting to know to get to the bottom of the story? I mean, yeah. where is that? That's just gone. Do they need this? Are the things, the money that they're asking for for certain things, does it really cost that much? And here's you know, there, there's lots of questions. And here's my asked. favorite part. Yeah. When you when you look, and we're gonna look at a few, and I'm gonna we're gonna tell you where to find this stuff because we're not BSing you. Right. None of this. You will not see a single tangible goal, tangible result, anything that these referendums will lead. It's not gonna lead to higher graduation rates, better test scores, student uh, achievement. You will not see any of that here. Right. They will make no promises. Okay. Now, let me start with the largest district in the state, the Anoka Hennepin, District 11. Yes. Here's the hard-hitting reporting from hometownsource.org. Alleged, they're alleged news. The first question, they have three questions on their levy, just on the ballot, just to confuse you as much as possible. The first question asks voters to renew and extend the operating levy, which was renewed in 2012. Blah, 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 blah. Really, of course, I love how the newspaper breaks it down for them. You know, $30 a month, that's all it is. Yeah. Discontinuing the operating levy would mean the district would need to make drastic cuts to make up for lost revenue. Uh, you mean tax dollars. Right. Question two. The second question seeks renewal of a capital levy, which provides technology, and this is going to be um, this is going to be a, a, a reoccurring theme. Yeah. Which provides technology to students, including audio enhanced classroom, computers, virtual learning, and internet access. Now, can I ask a question, Jay? Yeah. Okay. Why do they need a separate levy for quote unquote technology? Technology mm-hmm. is cheaper today than it's ever been. Okay. Not even close. What you what right. what a thousand dollars bought in technology in two thousand yeah. and what a thousand dollars would buy today aren't even close. Right. Okay. And they don't need the latest and greatest of everything. Come on, give me a break. These kids are there to learn. They're not there to goof off. Mm-hmm. You don't need the 
fastest speed with the with the biggest down. I mean, give me a break. Four and a half million bucks for audio enhanced classrooms. What is that? Are you teaching on a loudspeaker? Yeah. <laughs> let, let me tell you this. I can go on to eBay or something and find you a bullhorn for 20 bucks. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you kids, listen to me. <laughs> And virtual learning. We're yes. back to that. But why do we need audio enhancement? I never had trouble hearing my teachers when I was in school. Well, I mean, let me also say this. What's wrong with the chalkboard? Yeah. Especially well, the, especially the younger kids. Now. Fine. Yeah. But especially the younger kids. They don't, they don't need everything to be, you know, uh, brand new. Question three would be... In a hundred and twenty dollar annual tag, blah 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 blah. I didn't want to go into that. The new operating le- levy. This is my favorite paragraph. The new operating levy, if approved, would help provide mental health and social emotional support for students. Uh, emotional. Support. So we're gonna have a levy to bring in grief counselors and touchy feely class and. Um, emotional support animals emotional support <laughs> uh, and bring in what peacocks and badgers and uh, whatever so no kiss. pangolins <laughs> they're not yeah, bringing a pangolin better, in there. better not do that <laughs> everybody will end up with covid and they'll have to do distance learning again social and emotional support means more and more of our students are crossing at the graduation stage which is the reason I'm here, said school board member Nicole Hayes. What? Huh? Uh, don't you have to, like, uh, go to class and, like, learn something and pass classes? Isn't that how you graduate? Yeah. That's generally it. I mean, it yeah. doesn't matter if you feel good or not. That's no. not how you get there. <laughs> what the hell? And, of course, what an article by yeah. Hometown Support. So, wait a Way to get to the bottom of that levy. But, I mean, yeah. gee, you know, you, you spew out the district's propaganda. You interview some babe, some toots on the school board who talks about emotional graduating. And that's the extent of the article. Emotional graduation. <laughs> what the hell is that? We, emotional <laughs> graduation. What is that? I, don't I just. Know. Yeah, they're making they're making it up. I feel like I graduated. They're making it up. That's what yeah. they're doing. You know? I, I, I have a feeling like I graduated. Yeah. It, it, I feel like I could go out and do anything. <laughs> uh, of course, they're not alone, though. Yes. Jay. We have voting uh, uh, going on all over the state. Um, for, uh, and, and again, you're going to see the same stuff pretty much over and over and over. I'll go down to Prior Lake Savage area schools. Of course, their mission is to educate all learners to reach their full tent potential and productive members of our ever-changing global community. Okay? I already hate their Michigan mission statement. Me too. But they have a technology levy. Once again, we have a technology levy on the ballot on November 2nd. The request is for 10 years. Again, 10 years Mm -hmm. would help the district maintain and enhance technology for up-to-date devices for all students and staff, instructional software and online resources, classroom equipment. What the hell equipment do you need? Uh, Student and family. Chalkboard erasers. Student and and family community. Fine, I'll give them Windows 95, okay, if they need to talk that bad. Now, it's also safety. School safety and security systems. Like Simply Safe? What's that? It's like the, uh, you know, the little doorbell with the camera in it. Oh, that's, oh, okay. (laughs) And also crisis management. Yeah. Um, hold on a second here. If it is approved by voters, it will provide equitable access to instructional technology for all students and staff. Blah, 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 blah. Same crap I just read. But let me tell you something. Put pressure on the general operating budget competing for dollars. Oh, no. You actually have to make decisions now? We would be unable to keep up with the technology needs. And it would 
impact our ability to provide personalized learning experiences and make the com- meet the commitments in our strategic plans. Yeah, like you're probably meeting them now. Right? Yeah. I, uh, this is so vague. I mean, all of this money and up to de- up to date devices, instructional software and online resources like Google, that's free. That's a free online resource. <laughs> yeah. Type in your question, "Hey, what what's this?" and it tells you. You don't even need to pay for that. Uh, classroom equipment. Yeah. That, I mean, like you said, what does that mean? Desks, one of pencils, those, Kleenex boxes. What what do you need, and why aren't you outlining this for the people of the community well, so they can make an informed choice as to whether they want to pay for it or not? Probably because they don't want to tell us. But it's for the kids, Andrew. But but I mean, but they want the flexibility to put. I mean, I mean, let me ask this: Does this technology levy? Is this one of those things like? Like franchise fees, where you say it's for one thing, but you don't necessarily have to put it towards that? Well, I, I suppose. I, I mean, does I this just go into the general fund, or is this a separate thing? Well. Because ultimately, I mean, l- let me ask you this question. This is a 10-year request they're asking. Yes. Well, technology changes a lot. Okay? Yeah. So what if in three, four, five years... You don't have to replace everything. Like, I mean, I understand some laptops, they don't last forever. Uh, You know, they don't. Let's be honest. Some things need to be updated. Okay. I'm with you there. But we're making things better, smaller, blah, 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 every day. I'm amazed at technology, to be honest. And for 10 years, what happens if you don't have to spend it? Are you going to give the levy back? Of course not. No. So where is that money going to go? Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, there should be some sort of uh, of laying out, you know, even if it's just a guess. I mean, because you probably don't know. It's the truth. You, maybe you don't know. Right. But that's why I keep saying, why do you ask for a 10-year levy if you don't have any idea what technology will look like at eight? I mean, think about it this way. If the pandemic hit 20 years ago, we couldn't have done what we did with Zoom and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It didn't exist. Okay, we don't know in seven, eight, nine years what will exist. So how can we ask for money? It, it, it just it just seems like it's like a slush fund. They just want they want to use this as the excuse, just like franchise fees. Oh, yeah. hey, 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 you want to fix that road? Okay, we we need the three dollars on your electric bill. Right. Now we should explain though. I mean, with a technology levy, it can't be used for teacher salaries. It can't be right. I mean, it, it's I don't think so. Got to be separated that way. Yes, but I think also that that is can also. I mean, can they say anything is technology? I mean, I mean, could you? Could that just be anything but teachers and salary? Could it be um, staff to a certain? Well, we need to hire people. Well, to yeah, it IT can be. department, and we need. Yeah, you know, I mean, well, under support, they say staff for technology training, troubleshooting, and repairs. Right. So, so, I mean, some of that's probably farmed out. You know, your computer technician, they bring it into the local uh, computer go round or whatever it's called and have it uh, repaired or whatever they do. Well, I got to say something. I want to move on to Edina's because yeah. they are seeking a renewal. The 2021 technology levy, I'm at edinaschools.org, where they're defining excellence. The 2021 technology levy will replace the current 10-year one that expires on June 30th, 2022. The district is seeking to replace the $6.5 million levy for a total of $7 million. Oh, even though technology is cheaper, you are asking for more money. Of course. And that would go through June 30th, 2032. Ooh. Wow. God, gee, Lee. <laughs> what did we do before before iPads? Oh, that's right. We didn't we didn't have to hit the taxpayers up again. I forgot. Uh, technology is an integral is integral in district operations, including networks, internet, phone systems. Okay. What you didn't have phone? If well, anything, your phone system should be less now. Well, they're not saying what they're going to buy. They're just explaining why technology oh, yeah. is important. How about HVAC operations? That's technology? I guess That's so. regular maintenance. Yeah. 
So for anything they want to use it for. Pretty much. That, that's what they're setting the stage for. Yes, every day, Dinah Public School students use digital media technology to explore, contact, interactive, hand, hands-on, and engaged approaches for deeper learning and skills development. I really hate <laughs> edu-speak. I, I, I hate know, edu-speak. God, it's I like know. collaborative participation, <sighs> blah, blah, blah. I don't even want to bring real-world education to the classroom. Empowering students with critical skills. They need in a rapidly changing, culturally diverse goal. Yeah. Here's what I want to focus on, because they have a pie chart on there of how they spend their dope. Dope. <laughs> um, and you said, Jay, staffing and professional development. Yes. Look at that pie chart. Oh, my god. Half goodness. that money, oh, half no. that levy. More than half. A little more than half has gone right to staff. And, and professional development. If you go back, what? Two shows, not too many. Uh, two shows, I believe. We we discussed uh, what kind of professional development these teachers are getting. Do you really want them to continue to get that kind of professional development that's teaching them all about how to make your classroom more uh, equitable and how to bring in the the plight of the oppressed, so that the oppressors have to grovel and and say that they're not worthy and well they're not oppressors they're kids right and of course it will have minimal impact on homeowners annually oh of course. and of course they don't credit to edina of course they don't spend as much money as hopkins or as much as bloomington or as much as eden prairie so i guess that uh, they, they want to get up in in uh, the upper echelons there they don't up. they don't want to be down so low and, of course, it isn't just happening, of course, here. Over in Stillwater, they are asking for another levy as well. Our kids, our community, our future. Yeah. Stillwaterschools.org. Time is running out on the district's existing operating levy. Originally passed in 2013. If the new levy is not a- approved, the district will lose 11 to $12 million in annual funding and would face significant reductions in staff and programs. Of course, it's always a doomsday thing. Right. And once again, they have a replacement levy and a technology levy. So taxes will be going up because the replacement levy would make it so the taxes stay the same. The replacement levy or the technology levy is going to be additional on top. Of well, that. no, they both are tax increases if I'm reading this right. Oh, because are they? yes, because if you go down to the replacement levy, yeah. It's all about maintaining the quality and learning our community expects. The levy would renew. But it's a replacement levy cuz a straight renewal isn't enough. Right. So this is an increase. The technology levy, once again, you'll see the same stuff. Providing classroom devices, keeping technology update, give students reliable, blah, blah, blah. Um, Software, security needs, same difference. They have something uh, where, of course, they break it down to only $12 a month. Do they do they break this down anymore? Because here's what they're saying they're going to do: provide technology for kids and classrooms, and ensure a dedicated funding source for ongoing technology needs. That doesn't tell me anything. Uh, I don't see where they break that down. <sighs> Levy fast facts? No. <laughs> and of course, if question one is not pr- approved, higher class sizes. Reduction of 100 teachers, uh, fewer staff for the mental and emotional needs of everybody, loss of electives. I mean, once again, they're they're threatening you if if it's not done the way they want to. Can I just say something? Teachers and teachers unions and school districts have been asking for smaller class sizes for decades upon decades upon decades. <laughs> they every 10 years or less there are new levies being written and these levies 
are, they're always saying lower class sizes, lower. Class. How come you haven't made them smaller? <laughs> You've had decades to do it. You get new levies every 10 years at the most. Not to mention and, more money from the state year after yeah, year. And after you year. haven't done a dang thing to make the class sizes smaller. They're always talking about that. It's always. They, <laughs> it's know. another one of those buzzwords to get this. <laughs> it's something that they have poll tested. They've done with focus groups. How do we. Yeah. What. How do we. You know what I mean? It's the sales pitch. Right. They want more money. They have to figure out the best way to sell it. Yeah. The best way to sell it is to scare everybody that you're going to have to fire all these teachers, that you're going to have to. Uh, yeah. Um, There's going to be 40 kids in a class, 50 kids in a class, yeah. 100 kids in a class. I mean, they'll, they'll make it up. It's the same thing cities use, though, you know, when when um, coming up with, with a new budget. Oh, you don't want us to fire police officers and firefighters. No, of you? course not. It's always them. That's always yeah. the place you go. Right. Even though most cities, that believe it or not, public safety is not what they spend most of their right. money on. It's all on... Other stuff, and there's some of them are needs, some of them aren't. Yeah. How about you not write so many bonds so that we got to pay back the interest? Yeah, how about quit building sidewalks we don't need or bike paths nobody uses or uh, roundabouts that everybody yeah. hates? How about that? Yeah, just like this. How about if you want smaller class sizes, then hire a teacher, hire two teachers. Whatever you got to do, chip away at it, but you don't. You don't do anything class sizes. What, what what is the ideal class size? Can somebody tell me one on one? Is that what we're looking for? One two two students to one right? But teacher? but, but I, it's also something that they can play with because we all know that that they talk about core classes, yeah. elective. You know, if you put you know you can't put like phi ed or something right. with. I mean, there's ways to. I think to make that look good and look bad, yeah, you know, th true. there's there's ways to manipulate those numbers that you and I could never figure the out. Band, choir, right? Yeah, it mean, always drives up the numbers, <laughs> right? And I, you know, sometimes they'll write core classes on there, but you don't know what those are exactly yeah. because a core class can still be an elective class. And let me explain. I remember when I was in, I don't know if it's still this way because this is 30 years ago, yeah. but when I was in school, I remember I didn't have to take a math class when I was a senior. Mm -hmm. But I did. And there were 25 That's to good. 30 and my, something like that. Yeah. I was advanced in math, but I didn't have to go. I considered that a core class. But I yeah. elected to take it. I didn't right. have to. I did. I elected not to yeah. take it. <laughs> <laughs> I was in calculus in high school. Not me. Yeah. I went through algebra two, and that was enough. Yeah, I'm like, I, yeah, the math is not my I, I liked algebra and geometry. When you got past that, I didn't care for it. I'll yeah. admit I didn't like it anymore. No, instead, I was busy taking study halls and going to the band room and practicing instruments and learning how to. Got play that quality things. education, Jay. Hey, I did feel fine. You know, I, it may have helped pad my GPA a little bit. <laughs> having well, I was sitting in calculus. Were, you were tooting your horn, and well, and uh, you know. Um, and are you doing calculus today? No, but look who. No, just, but I didn't know that when I was eighteen. But look so. who just came from playing his guitar previous to this this little session we're having here see so those study halls paid off for me and you're not even doing calculus today. <laughs> the derivative of no i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> i'll admit i have no clue yes but you know i i just go back to this this sales pitch and just how they're all the same oh little johnny won't get his nook if if uh what do you call him is it a nook is that what you call it like a pacifier no, a oh. nook like uh, in in chess. It like moves. a breakfast nook. No, <laughs> what's oh, the what's rook. the Kindle? Rook. Kindle isn't that? Isn't it called a Kindle? A Kindle. Isn't it, what's the reading thing? Uh, yeah, that's a Kindle. Yeah. Okay, so little Johnny won't get okay. his nook or his Kindle. If, oh yeah, if yeah. The technology okay. doesn't pass. You Let's know, see I mean, where you're going. Yeah. another pandemic hits. I don't know if we can learn from home. The students might actually have to show up. So of course Karen won't want that. Right. You can't mask you gotta mask that Kindle just in case uh. the Kindle's contagious too. <laughs> I mean, but you know, yeah. 
they found how to sell this. And one of the ways to do it is, like we said, to break it down to, ah, uh, it's just 20 cents a day. You can find that. You can yeah. do it for the children, can't you? You can't look at those faces, those little ugly mushes, and <laughs> and <laughs> say no, can you, right. Jay? No. What kind of guy be a hero? What kind of guy are no. you? That's, yeah, that's bad news. You cannot take money from the children. <laughs> Even if it's not going to the children, they're saying it's going to the children. It's you got to pay. We know where it's got to pay. It's going to the you know, and it, we better don't ever talk about passing that along to nooks and kindles again. Because let me tell you what: if this government can find a way to say, you know what, if you have COVID and you're using an iPhone, there's a good chance Siri can get COVID. And if Siri gets COVID, oh, that'll pass give it, it to everybody. every Apple oh my user. God. Oh. Yeah, don't give them ideas. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Now, yes, I'll tell you who takes the cake though. Thief River Falls. Really? You would not think so. TRF dot K one two dot MN dot US, and you can look up their referendum. Oh, they page. made it easy to find at least. That's a memorable <laughs> web address. Ha! <sighs> By the way, I yeah. just wanna, before I read this. Don't look, Jay, because okay. I'm going to read it to you. Okay. I just want you to your reaction. One thing you will not see in any of these levies is any goal of student achievement. It's like, okay, look, you give us this money. I know it sucks. But you give us this money, and we're going to improve the graduation rates. We're going to improve our test scores. We're going to, you know, we're going to whatever, offer something that, that, that we can't offer otherwise. Right. There is never anything in this there's nothing tangible that they can point to i mean it's like okay you want us to renew a levy well show us the results from the last one yeah. funny how on all these websites that's missing yeah there's no results yeah we're, we're no not, results oh we got to implement our strategic plan well you've had your strategic plan since 2014 what the hell's happened uh. hello robinsdale but what's happened nothing nothing's moved but of course, you're going to come up with a new one. See, you're going to you're going to go to that education dictionary, and you're going to you're going to mean you're going to grab a bunch of Karens and a bunch of people who bunch of bunch of stay at home moms. And you know what they want to hear, Jay? There's they nothing want, wrong with stay at home. No, moms. there's nothing. But yes. you know what? You know what? They, fine, we're going to bring in a bunch of Karens. Okay, and you <laughs> know what they're going to hear? What? They're going to hear college readiness. They're going to hear. Career path. You better turn down the temperature Ooh, in that room. Boy. Turn that down. Okay. Yeah. Turn it down because those women are going to be on fire when they hear that. Okay. They just are. It's just like call it a smaller class size. It's kind of like when I walk into a room of you know, women over really? 75. That's what happens every single time. <laughs> you're going to get those women in serious heat when they listen to those words. Okay. And I'm telling you, these districts, whoever they're hiring, Yes. Why don't they hire you and I? Okay. I'm, they should I'm hire you and because I think we could do, we could come up with something new. Yeah. Rather than the same boring crap. I mean, it's just sort of like they're all working with like the same firm. It's one mm-hmm. eight hundred ask Gary or something. They're all doing <laughs> the same thing. I mean, I'm kidding, but I mean, the, the, they're all hiring the same consultants. Us. Yeah. Instead of trying to trick us with words that you are copying from two hundred other districts. Right. We need technology <laughs> for the students. And, and mental and emotional and support. Classrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and how do don't, you... don't forget your electives yeah. and your after school activities so your little brat doesn't have to come home right away. Okay, so we babysit them for two more hours. Your sports. We're going to cut it all if you yes. don't. You, that's that. The football that's team's it. going uh, away. That chess club, they're done if we don't pass this. But I got to well, give that it to... made for two very unhappy children. That's right. There'd have yes. been maybe three. <clears throat> um, you know, one gets the winner. Uh, <laughs> referendum <laughs> overview. <laughs> there. Just to show that the same yep. consultants work everywhere. The River Falls School District will be conducting an operating refer. You mean asking for one? This operating levy will allow the district to maintain the quality education that the River Schools provide and assist the district to meet the needs of our 21st century students. An operating blah 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 blah. I don't care. Okay, 
let me get to this part. They're going to maintain and expand our one-to-one technology program. Hmm. Technology has become an integral part of the classroom. Wait a minute. Where did I read that? Did I just read that about 10 minutes ago? Yeah. The quality of technology tools available along with the systemic approach, systematic, systemic, I don't know, can improve the level of education delivered to and ultimately the performance of our students. Really? Well, if that's the case, um, what happened to the last levy? Let's see the improvement in our students there. Why don't you show me that chart? Oh, that's right. You don't have that. I'm sorry. Right. As a district, we are well-equipped to meet our needs through personal devices. Oh, good. Then you don't need to buy any more. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) You're already well-equipped. What are you asking for money for? Yeah, you took the words out of my mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Guess what they're going to do, though? What? They're going to update Chromebooks, iPads, hotspots, smart boards, and keeping our network infrastructure up to date. So, so no what's wire. a hotspot? A hotspot is a lot of times you use your phone for to generate a wireless signal so that you can run something like an iPad or something okay, like that. Okay, I see. So, yes. Reason number two, foster strategic plan implementation. Now, Jay, can I ask a question? Yes. A strategic plan has become what? Another part of this edge you speak. Yes. We're going to come up with that. The, 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 we're going to copy Stalin and come up with the five year plan. And at the end of it, if it hasn't worked, we're going to come up with another one. And if that one sucked too, we're going to come up with a third one. Yeah. <laughs> but they basically just rephrase the same things over and over and over. It's kind of like watching sports. Yeah. If somebody says, well, the twins don't have a good bullpen. Five years later, the plan will be, well, you know, if you don't got enough ponies backing you up in the barn, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, just, it's, the right, it's, just, it's just the same thing. Yeah. You know, a lot of these strategic plans say the same thing, too, you know. Um, yes. And, and here, here is what they're going to do. There are a lot of costs associated with this implementation. In order to fully, so, okay, stop and think here. Like we said, technology is cheaper today than it's ever been. Yeah. Did you see when a Chromebook first came out, how much it was? What is it now? No, I never paid attention. To okay, but I mean, yeah. you think about it. What did the first laptops cost? I mean, what did the first desktop computers cost? Okay, it's all gone down since then. Okay? Yeah. But here, there are costs associated with this implementation. In order to fully implement this strategy, we will need to hire a few more teachers, pur- purchase updated curriculum, and ensure our staff has the training needed to help create the future. So, the cheap technology, we need to hire people to implement. So once it's implemented, are they going to be let go then? Hey, remember, this, this, they said cost to implement. Right. So, okay, we'll hire two IT people, and then when they're done, we're going to get rid of them, right? Um, no. Purchase curriculum? Well, can I say something as long as you said that? Here's the kind of curriculum they're looking to purchase. Uh, I brought up their strategic plan. Uh, And uh, what county is is Thief River Falls in? I mean, it's way the stink up there. Uh, Let me look. It's... not lake of the woods it's west no of there. it's it's west uh but it's not as far west as um Roseau. so um but it's almost there it's in an area that is pennington county pennington which is okay that's who uh, who represent that usually goes red doesn't it yeah, it's either seven or eight i want to say it's seven uh, to promote equitable experiences and ensure a personalized approach to foster a high-quality school experience, accelerate our efforts around diversity, inclusion, and racial equity. Huh? Yep. Yes, and maybe maybe you could humor us and look up the the um, the r- uh, racial makeup of. 
Thief River Falls because I'm going to I'm going to guess that it's pretty high concentration of white kids, uh, maybe a little larger uh, concentration of Native American kids than in some areas of the state. Uh, ninety-two percent white. Ninety-two percent. Two point one percent African American. Now Thief River Falls has eighty-eight hundred people, so yeah, that's what. Fifty people, not even. Maybe, yeah. Uh point seven percent ASEAN. Oh, Asian, I'm sorry. One point nine percent native and one percent from other races his Hispanic or Latino of any race is three percent. Okay. So you're looking at eight percent minority, we'll just call it that. Yeah. But that's where the white guilt comes in. You gotta teach the right. white guilt. But yeah, I thought that that was really nice. Um, and in their strategic plan, voice and choice help students find a college or career readiness path oh, based on individual passions and talents. It's like it's like we've read these things before. You know, can I say something too? <laughs> this is something that I really dislike. Yeah, that. That high schools continue to constantly push college. Yeah. Okay. You know, and, and look, college is the right choice for some kids. Yeah. Okay. Technical college is the right choice for some kids. Yep. Going right into the workforce is the right choice for some kids. Yes. Okay. But the constant push lets you, 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 you have to get that degree or you don't have a chance. Yeah. That is such baloney. There's a lot of kids that get the degree and don't have a chance because they're paying off their college until they're in their 40s. Or their degree is in something useless. Yeah. Sorry, but, I mean, that's one of the things with education that's got to change. And I think the only way this happens is through privatization. That that the only way you're going to get... I mean, if you can get 100 grand to go to school to study, you know... Political science. Oops, I mean... Or, or, you know... Syrian basket weaving. It doesn't matter. Syrian, I mean, yeah. but you can get degrees in the weirdest stuff. Yeah. Go look at the degrees at some of these schools. Right. And it's like, look, if, if you if you were forced to, you know, if you knew you couldn't just get money to go to school, right. okay, they would be forced to competitively price their schools, get get degrees that that would be that you could get a job in. Yeah. Okay. And, and but we don't have any incentive to do that. And all the public schools do is push for your college. Right. It's all they do, twenty four seven. They beat yeah. it into your head. They did it to me thirty years ago, and they're yeah. still doing it. Absolutely, gotta have a college degree if you want to be anything. <laughs> and why do you need a career path when you're when you're that young? You know how many people no. at fourteen, fifteen, sixteen know what the hell they want to do until they're sixty? Me. Yeah. Okay. You. Yeah. I sure didn't. I didn't care. I was in school. I, didn't, I mean, I had no idea huh? where I was going to go. I'm, I know I wasn't alone, but the constant push, you've got to decide something. I mean, it's, you know, some people feel a calling and some people don't. Things change over your life. Yeah. And, but this, this, God, this, just this, I remember that and I hated it. I yep. just hated it. I mean, you're looking at a kid who never did homework. I mean, I never did homework ever, not once. Yeah, never cracked a book open. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, that's, but I'm I mean, gonna tell you something. I, I did to do assignments, but I didn't like study. <laughs> if I did assignments, they were all in homeroom. <laughs> never brought a book home. It was I incredible. I didn't have homeroom. That would oh, have been okay. nice. I was the first one in there because uh-huh. I was always doing my work then. I prioritized having fun. But let yeah. me tell you something. I, I was a gifted kid, and that was it was a it was a bad thing. I was. I really wish I'd had to work for something. Yeah. Because it hurt me later that everything came so easy to me. But, you know, part of it, you know, again, was maybe that I, you know, wasn't challenged all that much. White I don't privilege. Know. I guess so. Yeah. I love this, too. Yes. Maintain and attract high quality staff. Now, you are in Thief River Falls. Can I just say this? Okay. Not everybody wants to live there. No. Okay, no offense. I would I would go live in northern Minnesota in a heartbeat. But maintain and attract high-quality staff. So part of this technology stuff 
is, as you know, salaries and benefits take a huge percent of our budget. We hope to stay competitive so we can maintain and attract high-quality staff. Well, how's that working? And again, what are the results? What are the results going to be? What is going to be the end game yeah. from your high-quality staff and your social and emotional needs? Right. And, of course, there's no goals, nothing tangible, so there's no accountability. It's right. It's perfect scam. And right. it is a scam. It is a scam. Well, in a lot of this, too, when they're talking about staff, and we've seen it in schools, we've seen it in police, we've seen it everywhere, where it's not just about getting anybody that's qualified. Uh, it is about getting more diverse workforce. Yeah. Uh, and even uh, we were looking at a, you know, we're, we're working uh, on a district right now, and uh, this the city, the district, is 88% Caucasian, but yet they want to diversify the the ethnicity of the teachers and staff in that district and i'm thinking to myself okay it's 88 percent white and now granted as as a white guy as a honky as a cracker <laughs> I, I i can learn a lady in college i didn't want to take math from because i knew i just heard all the kids complain i can't understand her because she was an immigrant and and Okay, so there's the language. Could not right. understand her. That would be the only reason. It has nothing to do with what nationality she was. It had nothing to do with her gender. It had nothing to do with... Well, she might have identified as a different gender anyway. Maybe. Maybe. She was the I. Yeah. L-B-G-T-Q-T-I. Yeah. Or whatever. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Inter intersectionality? I don't know what that is. <laughs> What, what's that what's that where there's a stoplight and a, <laughs> and a train comes down and you're intersection we've discussed that on the show before we, uh, yeah, oh yeah how did i miss that the the more intersections you you have the more uh oppressed you are remember <laughs> yeah. so if you're straight a straight white christian male you are you, evil. You are the. You are assumed you to be are horrible. An oppressor. Now, if you're a gay white male, you're a little less, you know. But if you're a gay black female, oh, you you hit the inner, you know, intersectionality jackpot. Three. That's you know? right. So yeah, uh, that's what intersectionality is, and I don't know if that's what they mean by the eye. You're but, three for three, like my wife says. Yeah. You're batting a hundred. Um, the the thing about uh these levies here and i just want to say this straight out that if you go to the secretary of state's websites sos.state.mn.us uh they have a whole host of special elections and there's some city ones as well yes there's one for cottage grove one for lakeville i don't know what those are but um school districts that have it's going um, to be one for minneapolis on whether to keep the police or that's not right. yes uh, but there's a whole bunch of, of but that's uh, in conjunction with a regular election, so that doesn't show up here. Uh. But there's, uh, you know, New Ulm, uh, Eastern Carver County. Uh, there's some elections. There's one in North Branch. There's one in Big Lake. There's one in Lakeville where there's vacancies. Uh, but there's also uh. questions in Albert Lee, uh, wherever you're wherever you're listening from, you know, is that is up 35 um if you if you start in the cities and you're headed toward duluth uh it's like hinkley and then like sandstone and ascot finlayson uh, and, yeah, and then uh, and then cities. i believe willow river is next uh, okay. that's actually where some of my family uh came from like really? they moved into that area after they came over on the boat from sweden so Huh. Yeah. And just think, uh, my family came on the Mayflower. Yeah. Adolphus Richter the Third, captain of the Mayflower. <laughs> um up in Cambridge, Isanti. Yes. Uh Buffalo Lake, Hector, uh La Sewer. The Sewer. Yes. The, uh, that is yes, the sewer. Yes. <laughs> Long Prairie School District. I mean it, it goes on in a Monticello. Uh Delano, Annandale. I mean, 
There's a whole Monomedi. There's a whole list of of uh, of levies up uh, in the odd year, in the year that they hope to push them through. So chances are there's a levy near you. Maybe not your district, but maybe next door. Uh, and when it does come, I'm sure you'll get the same rhetoric coming to you. Uh. You know, it's the, the, the all about the children. It's all about uh, maintaining our excellence. And nothing will define that, of course. But um, uh, have you ever voted for a levy, Jay? <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> think I've ever voted for a levy. I, I voted against a levy. I can say I've never voted for one either. Um, what I find interesting, though, and we, this bears some mentioning. Uh, the district gets all of these special favors to be able to promote their own levy to the taxpayers. Yes. Um, yes. And they are allowed to send out fly. They have to form a special committee, and I'm not sure... You know, I don't think it get funded with with school district monies. Yeah, but there's caveats but, to that, right? Because, for example, in Robbinsdale, some of the biggest funders, uh, it started with the superintendent, made a thousand dollar contribution. Right. Personally, they can. Yes. Much of the administration, and again, they have the right to do that. Yeah. But it's kind of to say that that committee is separate of the district. Right is it's baloney it's because questionable because they stand there at school events and they will hand out flyers yeah. vote yes vote yes they vote will. yes vote yes if i were to walk in there with flyers saying vote no vote no vote no i'd get the boot i wouldn't get to do that but yet they can patronize and they make sure to have plenty of events going on during the time that they're having a, a levy and a campaign for a levy so that they can make sure to hit everybody they can uh, that comes out to those events, and I'm sorry, but but to me that's an unfair advantage. Yeah, and it's it's just really not fair. I mean, it's really not fair to, especially when it's organized by the district. Yeah. I mean, come on, that's that's yeah. just <laughs> get out there, pound the streets like everybody else. Look, we're just at a disadvantage. And let me let me say something else too. And I mean, this is important. They plan these things for a long, long time. Oh yeah. I mean, this isn't something they came up with this summer. I mean, they planned, had meetings, and how they were going to do this, what they were going to say. I mean, hired somebody for their marketing hired a consultant campaign. Consultant to charge you for it. By the way, yeah. you pay for it as a taxpayer. Right. You know, it's kind of. I mean, we're at a disadvantage as it is with this stuff, and so, um, you know, I I don't know. Like I said, I mean. Districts aren't going to make the hard choices that they need to make if they think their spigots are yeah. never going to come off. And right now we have, you know, levy after levy here where, um, you know, you're being told it's not that much money. Oh, it's for technology upgrades. But nobody, nobody is explaining how this comes into better results and then you know and, and again for me until i see you know that this is leading to real student achievement i don't mean that they're learning uh, uh critical race theory right i mean that they're actually um doing better and they're you know getting the tools they need to be a successful adult i i can't imagine voting for one of these no it's just no. I mean, there's no accountability. There's no transparency. Yet those are the things that seem to come up over and over and over and over in these races. We need more transparency, or people running on. I'm going to bring transparency, but yet there is no transparency when it comes to these. And there's there there needs to be results shown as to what's been done in the past, and there needs to be more description in what you intend to do with them. I'm sorry, we're getting more technology for the students in the classroom doesn't count as as being transparent as to what you're going to do with money. The only way they're going to do that is people vote no. Right. I mean, it has to get shot down. I mean, that's the only way that you're going to see anything change. So, you know, I imagine most of these will pass. 
And most will yeah. by a wide margin. But and here's the thing, too, and we've seen it in in the past. You get one shot down, you know, you actually defeat one. It comes back in a few years. Oh, it comes back in, it'll come back in March or April. Right. It, it comes back and it will most likely pass because there's not an ex, a concerted effort to, to overcome it. Here's the great thing. Yeah. Okay. If, if, if an area says no, if an area says yes, I can't go back and recall that. No. But if they say no, they can come right back at you anytime they want. Absolutely. They can do it in the spring. They can do it at Christmas. They can do it the next year. Yeah, it should be on the first Tuesday in November of an even year, just so that everybody gets a voice. <laughs> just like And you know what? Elections. I, I, it really pisses me off yes. when people say, oh, local control, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you know what? Don't give me that crap. We all know it's not about the reason that they don't have it in even years. They want an odd year so they can control who goes to vote. Absolutely. That's not local control. You know damn well what I mean when I say local control. Well, and, and let's explain. I mean, really, we're looking at, uh, we were just working on a race. 26.5% of people went out to vote in special elections in the past. Yeah. Twenty five point or yeah, twenty six point five decided for the whole area what was going to be done. And, and, I'm sorry, did that represent the seventy five percent that said no? Or well, how about I last week showing Golden no Valley? But yeah, same thing. Odd years so they can control who's there. Yep. I mean, it's a joke when people say that's about local control. Activists mm. make sure, that, and that is. That is all it is. It's about it's about local control, all right, but it's about them locally controlling yeah. what happens. <laughs> On that note, Jay. <laughs> Speaking of the referendum. Dumb. dumb. <laughs> it's that time again that we all patiently wait for every show. Waiting with bated breath. We are. Yes. Community Solutions presents Stylin' and Profiling. Jet flying, limousine riding. The women love them, the men want to be them. Ladies and gentlemen, the sign off sermon. I give you Jason Bradley. Gracias. Yeah. So here we are looking at these things, and we, you know, we keep falling for them, so they keep doing it because we keep saying yes. You know, they keep saying, oh, it's for the kids, for the kids, for the kids. Hey, you don't want to be against the kids. It's for the kids. Well, when are we going to start demanding results? When are we going to start demanding transparency? When are we going to start demanding to see what they actually did? No, they sit back and they laugh. They laugh. And they laugh and they laugh because they know that we're dumb enough to go to the polls and vote for it again. And it just it doesn't seem to matter what the topic is. I mean, it can be in our schools, it can be in our our cities, and and if we do actually choose the right the right thing, you know, and we choose to put limits on government, we choose to make it smaller instead of bigger, and we choose to have lower taxes rather than higher. They just send other people in to do the dirty work. I mean, it, take for instance, you look at what's happened with the Texas abortion law and um, some of the other states that are coming up with some abortion, uh, anti-abortion legislation, right? And now the federal government brought back an old uh, bill from 2019. Uh, this is what, uh, Senate Bill 1975, which uh, was a fine year. But let me tell you, <laughs> they, they are looking to make... They're looking to make it so that they override the states by using the Commerce Clause so that abortion cannot be regulated by the states at all, and it will become completely a federal issue. Uh, forget the Tenth Amendment. Forget any of that. No. And, and it would make things so vastly uh, pro-abortion 
that it would it reserves the right of the clinics to do the abortions and the right of the patients to get the abortions under just about any circumstance you can think of. They have all these limitations and regulations states have put in and it, it, it nullifies them and then it goes and talks about how oh, well you know really we can't regulate this for anybody under any situation and then and then they try to to put limits on the Supreme Court and say if the Supreme Court strikes part of this down the rest of this law stays on the books if they find that it's not constitutional. We have a government that does not know when to quit. We tell them to stop. We say we don't want this. We say that, hey, you have gone far enough. And they just laugh and they find another way around it. Uh, So they may have been unsuccessful at the state level. Let's bring the feds in. There may be unsuccessful at the local level let's bring the state in let's bring the county in let's let's have so much government just pressing down on you that eventually you'll just cave we have to stop this it's madness it is insanity it is the definition of insanity but yet we keep doing it over and over and over again, expecting a different result. How can we? How can we sit back and just, we're putting our trust in people to do the right thing that have never done the right thing. So, if we're not willing to step in and sacrifice and 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 bring our own agenda to the table why should we be surprised when our agenda doesn't ever come to the table Gazelka's not going to bring it they use it as a bargaining chip and then give it away as a concession when he gets no new taxes I We need people with a backbone in this state. We need people willing to stand up at the city level, at the school uh, school board level, at the, the county, as people in uh, soil and water conservation districts, in, in hospital districts, all these local nonpartisan races. We need people to get themselves involved. Now, I've heard Republicans start talking about, oh, we need to make these partisan races. And I'm sorry, that may help some of you out in the nether regions of the state. And that's fine, you know, the, and not really even the nether regions, anywhere outstate from, from the metro area. Most of that, it, it, it would help you. But you know what else? You can do it without having to do that if you would just put in the work. And then you don't have to take away the opportunity for the people that live in the more blue and purple areas to be able to still have an impact. We just need to start doing it the right way instead of just doing it to do it. There comes a time where we have to realize that if we give in, if we stop, if we just allow things to take their natural course, the natural course of humanity is to acquire more power, is to find ways where things benefit you, and to push those things and promote those things. So that's all they're doing in government. Can you... Can you really blame them? I mean, yeah, it would be it would be nice to have people that weren't corrupt. I mean, you can blame them for that. You know, I, but they're, they're saying insane things. They're doing insane things. You know. I, I I turn on the news every day because this is what we do. You know, Um, we have to keep up on the news. We have to understand what's going on in our our, our state, our country, our world. And I don't recognize anything I see. I don't recognize anything. And I think that we're 
quickly moving towards not being able to recognize even our place in our country, that our, our entire way of life is about to change if we don't do something. Now, I know it's not about just doing something. It's about doing the right things. Well, then let's do the right things. Let's sacrifice for our fellow countrymen. Let's sacrifice for our, our, our sons and our daughters and our grandchildren. We need to be able to stand against anything and everything that comes against us. We need to be able to stand and stand tall. We can't allow the enemy to continue. I don't mean Democrats are the enemy. That's not what I'm getting at. But there is an overarching movement. There, it's almost like it carries its own momentum. It's got perpetual motion that continues like a snowball rolling downhill, and it picks up steam, and it 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 it, it gathers speed as it goes. And it just, it, we have to stop allowing ourselves to get beaten down by this thing. To be silenced by this thing. To feel inept or to feel hopeless over the actions of this thing. We are fighting things here in the physical, but we are also fighting things in the spiritual realm. And we're fighting things... Um, just between people in the mental and emotional realms and and I know that there are those of you out there who are willing to be heroes if you're willing to take a stand against this no matter what the consequences end up being no matter if you get canceled no matter if it takes a few evenings away from you here and there no matter if it um brings about ridicule from people in your community. There are those of you that are willing to withstand that kind of stuff. We need you on our team. We need you to say, okay, I'm in. I've heard enough. I've seen enough. I can't handle it anymore, and I'm in. Whatever it takes, I am willing to make sure that we have victory <laughs> that we don't lose freedom forever because right now it's on life support we can't have that we cannot be in a place where freedom is weak freedom has to be alive and strong and growing we can't go into winter <laughs> as a nation where everything's dead and cold. We have to watch that. So, if you're interested in joining the fight, if you know people who are interested in joining the fight, if you want to help continue to make this movement grow, to give it power, <laughs> and I don't mean corrupt power, I mean the voice of the people, the power in that, <laughs> to legislate, to, to, or, 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 and for those that you live next to, If you think that maybe at all you'd be interested in at least looking into it, let us know. C O M M Solutions M N at gmail.com. That's C O M M Solutions M N at gmail.com. 
and we would love to talk to you. We would love to work with you. We'd love to help get your area up to speed and take back what is yours. We can beat the DFL machine. We can beat the Marxists. We can beat the corporatists and, the, and those who are the oligarchy coming together uh, in these pro public-private partnerships that want to want to suck the life out of America for everything they can get out of it. So we're here. We're willing to help. We're willing to join with people that just want to find their part, want to do the work that's assigned to them. Let's work together. Let's get this done. Because we can't do it alone. And even so, we love you, Minnesota.